Have you been looking to deploy a data science dashboard or a machine learning model to your organization or to your clients, but you don't have the time to invest in learning about the web frameworks of Flask and Django? If so, then the Streamlit library may be for you. Hey guys, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. Streamlit was developed as an open source framework for developing and deploying data science dashboards and machine learning models, all without needing to rely on a team of front-end developers or learning languages such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It was founded in 2018 by a team of ex-Google engineers who had extensive experience of developing and deploying machine learning models. The Streamlit is built on top of Python and it allows you to access many of the popular data science libraries such as Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly, and many others. So over the next three videos, we're going to see how we can develop a Streamlit app to take in some data and then to create some data visualizations, as well as making the Streamlit app multi-page and interactive. And we're going to do that with some geoscience data that focuses on earthquakes. Now this data is very simple compared to what I've previously discussed on this channel, which focuses on well log data. However, the techniques and the ideas behind creating this app can be applied to any data set. So I've kept it generic for this purpose. So in today's video, we're going to focus on how we can install Streamlit and how we can get up and running by creating a single web page where we can load the data in from a file and then create a simple visualization and view some statistics from a data frame. So let's get started. So here I am in Visual Studio Code and the first step that we're going to do is install Streamlit. So we do that just simply by calling pip or pip install Streamlit. And that will go out to PyPy and fetch the library. So in this situation, I already have it installed, uh, but you will see some progress as, as the dependencies are being installed, as well as the Streamlit library. So now that Streamlit's been imported, we can check that by going up here and typing import Streamlit as ST. And this is just a way to abbreviate Streamlit down to something that's more memorable and easier to call during the code. So it also saves typing a lot more characters. So once we've got that, we can then save this file and just to check everything's working, we can then call upon streamlit run app.py. So we'll run that and then streamlit kicks in in the background and then it opens up in your browser. So I've opened up my Chrome browser here and you can see that you're given a local URL and a network URL. So if you're using Safari, for example, there are some known issues with Streamlit not quite working there. So I've opened this in Chrome and I can just type localhost and then 8501. And then we just get a blank window. So if your Streamlit is running, you will know by one that you've got this black area. You've got this text in the bottom saying made with Streamlit. And then over on the right, you have this hamburger menu where you can access many of the different settings including rerun, settings, recording screencasts, and some of the developer options down the bottom. So we don't need to worry about this at the moment, but we can return back to our Visual Studio Code, and I will just resize this window to make it easier to work with both at the same time. And so now that we've got Streamlit installed and running, we can start adding some information to our Streamlit app. And the first thing we generally do is put in a title for our page. And we can just do this by simply calling st.title, and then passing in some text. So I will go with the traditional way of uh, checking something is working by typing hello world. And I can do command save or control, uh, command s or control s to save that file. So we'll see over on the right that our source file has changed. So we can either always rerun, so when we save this file, changes will be made in real time and it will be updated here in Streamlit. Or we can just re click on the rerun button and the changes will then appear on here. So the data that we're going to be working with in this tutorial is going to be an earthquake data set. And this is just a general geoscience data set just to explain the principles of Streamlit and how to use it. So we'll give this project a title. We'll call it Earthquake Data Explorer. And if I do Command S to save the file, I can then just switch on this Always Rerun option. So if I go in here and type in one, two, three, four, five, and then save the file. And we can see that the text in the Streamlit app updates automatically when it is saved. So let's remove that. So now that I've got a title, I want to explain what this app is about. And we can do this through one of two ways. 
we can use just plain text or we can use the markdown language. If we're using text, we can call upon st.text and then we pass in some text. So this is a web app to explore earth, earthquake data. And then save that and we can see the text updates behind uh, on the Streamlit app. So the alternative way is to use markdown and we can call st.markdown and then we can pass in some markdown language. Now, if you're not familiar with markdown language, it's just a, a different way of writing. So you can use symbols to create headings, use it to make uh, text bold, and you can use it for a different variety of things. And that's generally what's used within the readme files of a GitHub repository, for example. So for this one, if I type in uh, this is double star markdown, double star, and save that, we can then see that we've got text in the background, which is different to st.text, and we can see that the markdown is in bold. It's not very obvious, so let's uh, make this a heading. And we can do that by using the pound sign or the hashtag sign, and I will set this as, as a level two header. So save that, and then we can see that the text changes dramatically. So let's just remove this text as we don't really want it within our app. So the next step is to allow users to upload data and we're going to be uploading a CSV file which contains the earthquake data. And we can do that by providing a file uploader. So let's call upon uploaded file is equal to st.file uploader. And then we can pass in some text. So upload uh, your file here and if I save that we then get a simple drag and drop box here or we can browse for a file. So once a user uploads a file it will be assigned to this variable and once we assign that file to that variable we can then start doing things to that file. So for example if the user uploads a CSV file we can then use pandas to read it. So first off we need to import pandas as pd and then down here we can call upon pd.read csv and then we'll call upon uploaded file and we'll call this date df for our data frame so once that data has been assigned to a data frame we can then call upon st.write and then pass in df.describe so we'll view the statistics of this file if i save this we then get a value error on our on our Streamlit app saying that the, there's an invalid file path or buffer object. So what we can do is we can then wrap this uh, in an if statement. So if uploaded file, and then indent these. So what it's going to do is going to check if this file has been uploaded. And if it has, then display this extra information. If it hasn't, then carry on as normal. So if I save that, that message goes away. If you're following along, you can find the data source in the GitHub repository uh, that is linked down below in the description. So if I take over my data set and then drag it onto this uh, Dropbox here, we can see that the data has been read and then we have our description of the data. So we have our latitude, longitude, depths, seismic stations, magnitudes, etc. We have all of that information here. So there we have a very basic app where we've created a title, created some text, and then uploaded some file to the server. And then we've generated the statistics of that data. So let's take this a little bit further and start exploring it a little bit more. So now we've got the statistics, uh, we can just format this app a little bit better by calling upon st.header data statistics. And then what we're going to do is create a new header, st.header, and we'll call upon uh, data header. So we're going to display the first five rows of our data frame. And again, we can call upon st.write, and then pass in df.head, and then save that. So even though I've not uploaded a file, it still has this in memory. And when we've got auto rerun enabled, we can then see the new um, new section of code that we've put in. So data header, we can now scroll along our data and check what each of the columns contains. 
So that's all great looking at numbers, but the whole idea behind Streamlit is that we can create interactive dashboards or dashboards containing graphs and text and also these tables. And this allows the users or our customers or anyone who is wanting to look at this data the ability to understand it without needing to worry about code. So let's just create a simple graph using matplotlib to display some data. And we can do that by calling input import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then down here what we need to do is create a figure and an axis. And we'll set that equal to plt.subplots and we'll set that to one by one. So we're just creating a single subplot in this figure. Then we call upon axe.scatter and then we pass in our x-axis which is going to be df and we'll set that to depth and then we set our y-axis which is going to be equal to df and we'll set that to the magnitude of the earthquake and then we can then set and then we can set the labels so this just helps understand what data is plotted on what axis. It's just basic data visualization 101 that we need to include some sort of label to understand what we are actually looking at. So if I do ax.set x label, and we'll set this to depth, and then ax.set y label, and we'll set that to magnitude. And then to get the figure to show, or normally in a code we would do plt.show and then we would get a matplotlib plot back. But here we need to call upon st.pyplot and then pass in our figure object. And then once we do that, we can then save this file. Okay, small typo, if I go back to subplot and type in an S here, so we're using plt.subplots instead of plt.subplot. And then again, we just need to change the these to depth and also this one to lowercase depth. So there we go, a little bit of live debugging and as always these messages can be helpful to identify where the issues are. So when, once we save this file, we can then go back to our Streamlit app and then we can see our graph here that we've created in matplotlib. So we've got our magnitude on the y-axis and our depth on the x-axis. So right away, we can see that the majority of earthquakes either are shallow, so sub 300. So I believe this is meters in this specific data set. Uh, so we've got a majority of earthquakes in this upper zone here. So we have an increasing amount of earthquakes much deeper down, around about the 500 to 700 meter mark. And so we can tell a story right away that, that most earthquakes in this data set are either shallow or quite deep. And we can see that the more shallow they are, they, they've got a much greater magnitude compared to those ones that are deeper down. So with this figure, it's a static figure. So we can't change the x and the y axis unless we go back to the code and start to change it here or by adding in special drop downs. And we'll see in part three where we will look at Plotly to enhance this plot by allowing the user to choose what is displayed on the axis as well as choosing the colors and making it much more interactive. So if you want to find a copy of this code, then you can go to the GitHub repository linked down in the description and you can examine it in your own time. The code that is found in the repository will contain a few comments about what each of the lines are doing just to help you on your way. So in the next episode, we're going to see how we can turn this app from a single page app, which where we don't have to scroll up and down to view all this data, and, we'll and we will convert it into a multi-page app where we just have a menu, and once we click on it, we can go to each of these different sections in our app. So there we have it, we've seen how to create a simple app using Streamlit, making some simple calls to the Streamlit library to display a pandas data frame and our matplotlib figure. So in the next video we're going to see how we can take a single page app to a multi-page app. So if you've enjoyed today's video then be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more content from this channel be sure to click that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.